Hello and welcome fellow travelers. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in because you know what today is. Show me the money. That's right, baby. It's payday. And in today's video, how to build a stasis device farm for dummies part three, we're gonna talk about the recipes that we need to craft the stasis device and the stasis device itself. Then we'll take those recipes and craft us up to 10 stasis devices that we can sell for around 150 million units. Oh, I just got a tingle in my, um, well, anyways, I'm so ready to get my grubs on the feta, so let's get this started. Here's a list showing the 20 recipes that it takes to craft a stasis device. And I'm sure by now you probably already have them all, but maybe you don't. Here's how to check. Access this part of your inventory and choose catalog. Then choose crafted products. From here, you can easily see if you have all of the 20 recipes that are on the list. If you have them, then jump ahead to crafting. But if you're missing a few or just getting started, then we've got a lot of work ahead of us to get you caught up. As you play the game, you're going to find these navigational data chips. They can be found in containers or given out as a reward for completing a task. And then you can trade them in or exchange them for some useful planetary charts. To do this, go to a space station and look for the cartographer. They're located close to the portal. Initiate trade and choose exchange maps. You can also just buy maps for nanites if you choose. Now there are four different types of planetary charts that you can choose from. The one that we're looking for is called secret cartographic data. Trade in or buy as many of these as you can. There are several types of secure locations that we'll find, and it's not a guarantee to get the right location every time. So you may use up a few of these charts before you find the right location. Also, keep in mind, there is two different ways to use the planetary chart. One is in the atmosphere or on the planet's surface, like I just did. The other is in space. If you use the chart on the planet, the location will always be located on the planet. But if you do it in space, then the location will appear randomly on any planet in the system. I feel it's quite a bit easier to do it on the planet's surface. It makes for a lot less flight time between locations. Once you find the right location and answer the question on the computer correct, you will receive a recipe one of two ways. First, you may just get a random recipe as the reward, or you might get a pop-up and choose which recipe that you want. Now, if you don't answer the question correctly, you will have to use another planetary chart and do it all over again. But don't worry. If you don't get the question right, you can just reload the game from the quick save that was created when you exited your ship, just as you got here. And then you can just do it over and over again until you get the question right. If you notice at the top right of this menu screen, we can actually tab to another category, Valuable Products. Here we can find all 20 of the recipes that we need. Now there are way more recipes than the 20, so if you get this pop-up, please choose wisely. Congratulations, you've made it. We now have our gases, minerals, flora, and recipes. Now it's time to make the feta. Okay, now I'm in survival, and there's really no difference between survival and normal other than I can only hold 250 resources per inventory slot compared to normal where you can hold like I don't know what a million or something like that so everything I'm about to do is because I can only hold 250 items per inventory slot 
First thing I've done is I have my entire inventory cleared out. That way I have plenty of room to take on items and craft as we go. The next thing that I've done is I have three of my storage hoppers completely empty. That way they can hold all of the resources that we're about ready to collect. Luckily, I can store up to 1,000 resources in each slot in these storage containers. In the first one, it'll hold all my gases. The second container will hold all the minerals. And the third will hold carbon, cobalt, and oxygen. Easy peasy. All right, let's go off world and collect our resources. Now, it doesn't matter which planet that you visit first. Uh, we're going to go to the hot planet because the ice planet is in the same system as our tropical planet that we're on right now. Five thousand sulfurine. Thank you very much. When collecting our minerals from a storage hopper, remember only 500 is needed. So in case you don't know, we can split the stack by pressing X or using the D-pad up and down in increments of 10. So pro tip, instead of filling up your storage container, just grab what you need here and leave the rest until it's needed again. So it's up to you. Take only what you need or take it all, which is what I'm going to do. Before I leave, I'm going to take a moment and put all these resources into containers to help keep my inventory clear. The gases go in this container. And the minerals go in this container. On my cold planet, I'll repeat the same process and collect the minerals and gases. Here I get dioxide and radon. Once I've collected these resources, I will store them into containers, just like we did the last resources that we collected. This helps keep my inventory cleared out for our next stop. Now the amount of time that it takes me to go from planet to planet is about four minutes. I've been doing this in real time so that you guys and gals can see how long it takes to go from one planet to the other, collect the resources, store them, and then move on to the next. Really, the only thing that I've cut out is the load time between the planets using the Stargate. Okay, now that I'm back on my lush planet, first thing I'm going to do is just what we did on the other two planets, and that is collect the minerals and gases, and then store them. Here we collect paraffinium and nitrogen.
Next, I want to collect the cobalt and oxygen. Now, I have 1500 cobalt in this supply depot, but I only want 750, so this time I will cut the stack in half by simply pressing X. It's time to start refining cobalt into ionized cobalt, so I will take all 5,000 of the oxygen. Each medium refiner holds 250 in a resource. I have three here. That's why I only grabbed 750 cobalt. I'll put 250 cobalt and 250 oxygen in each refiner. Now I just collect the ionized cobalt until all three of the refiners are empty. When completed, 750 cobalt and 750 oxygen will make 1875 ionized cobalt. We only need 1500. So, if you're more of a precise type of person, then 200 cobalt and 200 oxygen in three refiners will create exactly 1,500 ionized cobalt. For me, it takes only about two minutes to refine all of this cobalt into 1500 ionized cobalt. Once I'm done, I'm going to store all the ionized cobalt into a storage container. That way it leaves room for carbon, which is what we're going to refine next. I'm using two of these standing planters to get my carbon, so I will be starting with a very small amount. But two carbon and two oxygen will make five condensed carbon. Once I've collected 250 condensed carbon, I'll place that and oxygen into another refiner and I'll keep doing this until all three refiners are using condensed carbon and oxygen. As I'm collecting, I'll keep an eye on how many condensed carbon I have. We need 3,000. Refining carbon this way took 145 carbon, 1,500 oxygen, and right at 4 minutes to make 3,000 condensed carbon. When finished refining, store all the carbon and oxygen. That way we can make room for the flora. Okay, I hope you have your favorite sun hat on because it's time to pick the flora. And we can pick it all at the same time using this interface. It can be collected standing inside the biodome or even from far away. The marker's pretty generous.
Now, if you're like me and you filled up empty slots in the biodome with random flora, then take a second and get them out of your inventory into a storage container. Don't need them getting in the way and cluttering up our inventory. Now get close to the containers that hold our gases and minerals because we're going to need those here in a moment. But first, let's take a look at this chart. For easy reference and to show the order in which all the items will be crafted in, I've created three charts. This first chart we've seen before. It shows how many and of what type of resources are needed to craft one stasis device. Green is the flora, blue is the gases and minerals, and red is the refined resources. But what's new here is the white numbers. If you count, there are 14 resources listed here. So, one is frost crystal, two is selenium, three is cactus flesh, four is star bulb, and so on up to 14, which is dioxide. The reason the numbers are out of order is because all of these resources are categorized together and in alphabetical order. This chart shows all 20 of the recipes in order of how they need to be crafted. Because of the first chart, we know that the white numbers represent our resources. So, it takes frost crystal and selenium to make a heat capacitor. 3 is cactus flesh and 4 is star bulb and so on down the list. Now there are a couple of things I'd like to point out and that is if you notice here and here we have the same resources making the same recipes over again and that's because they are used to craft other different recipes that we're going to need. Next is glass. It takes five glass to make one living glass, which makes it the only recipe in row one that we'll need to craft more than one of per stasis device. This chart shows how many crafted items are needed to make 10 stasis devices. Remember, it takes five glass to make one living glass, so I'll need 50 glass in total. Now the chart will morph into another chart showing the order of how I'll craft these items. To get started, I'll craft these first four green recipes with flora. Second, I'll craft these yellow recipes with gases and condensed carbon. Then I'll craft the blue recipes with minerals and ionized cobalt. After that, we can craft everything else. We'll start with the semiconductor and hot ice. Then we can craft the circuit board, superconductor, living glass, and cryopump. Then we can craft the quantum processor, the cryogenic chamber, and iridescite. After that, we have everything we need to make a stasis device. So now that we know the order of how we're going to do it, let's check it out in action. Okay, Flora has been picked, and I'm ready to craft the first recipe, which is a heat capacitor. It takes resource 1 and 2, which is frost crystal and selenium, and we need to craft 10. So if I use the right and left bumpers, I can choose how many I would like to craft and craft them all at one time. Next is polyfiber. It takes cactus flesh and star bulb to craft 10 of these. Next is lubricant. It takes specium and gamma root to craft 10 of these. The last recipe in this category is glass. And I promise this is the last time I tell you to remember it takes five glass to make one living glass. So we're going to craft 50.
After crafting these four items, we've used up all of our flora. So at this time, you can store or sell any of your leftover flora. I always store all of my extra flora because after several days, I could maybe make an extra one or two free SDs and who doesn't want some extra feta? Okay, now that my inventory is empty, I'll go get all of the gases. Then I'll go grab all of the condensed carbon. Next, I'll make a little bit of room in my main inventory for crafting. Now I'm ready to craft 20 thermic condensates. Uh, why can I only go to 10? Okay, I should be able to go to 20. Let's try it again. Um... Yeah, I can do another 10. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. I guess, uh, ghost in the machine. Next, let's craft 20 nitrogen salt. Next, we need 20 enriched carbon. And after crafting this recipe, we will have used up all of our gases and condensed carbon. Okay, time to grab up the last of our resources. In this uh, container, I will grab the minerals. In this container over here, we'll grab the ionized cobalt. Now I'll jump into the, my main inventory, make a little bit of room so I can craft. Now I'll mix these resources together and I'll make 10 aeronium, 10 mango gold, and 10 grand team. Now I can craft the items from row two. That is the semiconductor and hot ice. We're gonna need 10 of each. Now I can craft row three. That is the cryo pump superconductor, living glass, and circuit board. Now we can craft everything on row four. The first thing is the cryogenic chamber. Next is the quantum processor. And finally, iridescite. And we will need 10 of each of these. And with that, my fellow travelers, the last thing to craft is the stasis device. 10 of these are worth 156 million units. 
Well, it's actually about 145 million in most systems. But if you can find a high economy system, then these SDs can go for over 160 million. But hey, who cares about a few million when you're going to be making this kind of feta every day, right? One final thing to note in case you haven't been keeping track and that is how long it takes to craft the stasis device. Meaning starting from collecting the resources from our three planets all the way up to crafting the stasis device. The way I showed it in today's video is the fastest I've been able to figure it out and it still takes about 25 minutes. So keep that in mind if you're doing this every day. It's going to take a few minutes to get it done. Alright everybody, thank you all for stopping in and watching part 1, part 2, part 3 of how to make a stasis device farm for dummies. I appreciate it. I hope it, the tips and tricks I showed in these videos helped out and you make a ton of money. Until next time everybody, please stay safe and peace.